In this video, we're going to be discussing the simple harmonic motion and phase angle, as well as some of the detailed equations of motion. So for example, for displacement, for velocity, even acceleration. I like this, and you have the frequency of bad physics jokes. <laughs> it hurts. All right, let's look at this. First of all, uh, remember that the equation for simple harmonic motion, remember it goes like this. It goes A equals minus omega squared x. And it turns out if you really were advanced in math, you could actually do, depending on the math class you take, you could actually solve this. This is actually a differential equation, and if you're really, really careful with it, you'd end up with a solution. Thankfully, we don't have to know how to get to this solution. But just so you know, one of the solutions to this differential equation goes like this, that x equals x0 times sine of omega t plus phi. And I'll explain all the variables here in a second. So this is a formula in your data booklet, hooray. So eventually, basically, you can get from there eventually to there. So let's look at what everything here is. First of all, t is a time. That's good. That's in seconds. X is the displacement. That's the displacement of your object from its equilibrium, so that would be in meters. X zero, now we're going to call this the amplitude or the maximum displacement. So if something, let's say, moves left and right, for example, well, from the middle to the left or from the middle to the right, that's going to be the amplitude here. So we're going to have that also measured in meters. Remember, the angular frequency is in radians per second. And phase angle now is something new. So this is actually something in radians. We're going to talk about this. This is the part then that's actually new. Okay, so what do we do about this? So I think it's important maybe to go a little bit deeper with this. By the way, if you remember your equations of graphs here, um, well, we could kind of figure this out. This you do in math as well, depending on your math class. But this would basically be, this is x, this here could be against t. It's a sine curve where this here is the amplitude. So let's just see. Can I draw a sine curve? Yep. A sine curve starts here, goes like this. This is like one period of a sine curve. This omega, if you remember your transformations, omega will basically shrink it or stretch it. And this phi moves the whole curve left or right. So what phi does, phi actually moves it. So it could take the graph, for example, and move the whole thing. That would be phi. If you picked up the whole graph, for example, you moved it to the right, or you moved it to the left, that would be something relating to phi. In fact, it would give you what phi is. At least phi, we're going to measure it in radians, whereas here you see it in time, in seconds. So I'll show you a little bit more about it now. So we're going to define this thing called a phase angle, okay? So this phi here is a phase angle. It's measured in radians. What we're going to be doing is we're going to look at where in the cycle does the oscillation start, and we're going to be putting everything in terms of radians. So it's important to remember something about radians. First of all, uh, let's mark this down right here, that one complete cycle. Okay, so in other words, one complete period is going to be equal to 2 pi radians. This is a key thing to remember. If you don't know anything else about radians, that's fine. Just know this fact right here, okay? So it depends on which math class you're taking, but really, that means if you go all the way around in a circle, so in other words, uh, or a cycle, it means if you do like, like one whole thing like this right here, at the end of here, this value then will be 2 pi in terms of radians. So we're going to kind of ignore the time, and we're going to look at it in radians, in terms of 2 pi. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's look at this first example here where we've got phi equals zero radians. What does that mean? Well, that means the equation then would go x equals x zero times sine of omega t plus zero. In other words, it would be just this. This here would be your equation. By contrast, if we did this in here, oh, that would be similar, except I just made a bad x here. There we go, equals x zero, the amplitude, times sine of omega t, and that would be plus pi over 4, for example. Right, and this one here then would be x equals x0. I'm just trying to show you this graph. You could actually do these graphs yourself. If you really wanted to, you could actually put them down. It's. I'm going to show you what to really focus on here. So we're going to say omega t, uh, in this case right here, plus pi. Let's see what the difference is between these. I think that's going to be something that's going to really help us out here. Maybe I'll you know, separate these here by this little line just so that it's easier to think about. Okay, so let's actually take a look at these and see what happens here. With zero radians, what does that mean? Okay, let's look at that, and we're also going to look at pi over 4 and maybe pi, just to see what do the graphs look like, what's going on. So if we've got this one here, well, it hasn't been shifted at all. So that means it's just going to be a graph of just a sine curve, just going up, and then down, and then up. 
So the key thing is, do you notice then, because we had zero, like phi was zero, do you notice it looks just like a sine curve? Except the key thing is at t equals zero, x equals zero. Do you notice that? Like this is the key thing, right? We're starting off basically right here at this point. And in fact, I want you to think about this. Whenever we do the other ones, always think of this as your reference. So we're going to say, ah, a regular sign is like this, because now we're going to be comparing it to this graph. That's why I did it a dotted line each time. But now I consider it moving moved left or right or whatever. Let's maybe label some of the uh, axis values here. Now, yes, this might be in t values, sure, but I don't actually care so much about the time. I care more about scaling this to make it 2 pi radians, the end here. If the end is 2 pi, does it make sense that half of it then would be pi? And half of that again would be pi over 2. And if this is 1 pi over 2, this must be 2 pi over 2, but that reduces. That means this right here then must be 3 pi over 2, and so on. And by the way, we could split this again in half if we wanted to. We could say half of that would be pi over 4. This would be 2 pi over 4, which is fine. This would be 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4 would be right here in the middle. 6 pi over 4 is this. 7 pi over 4 would be that. And 8 pi over 4 would reduce to that. So just to show you at least that scaling this right here with this 2 pi, although it seems kind of awkward, it's really important to be able to do. So let's look at now what happens with this one right here. What happens now? Well, if I looked at this whole thing, what does this plus pi over 4 mean? It means we want to go left. Let's say I'm going to put it down like this. Maybe I'm going to say left by pi over 4. What does that mean? That means then I have to you know, try to draw my graph except going left by pi over 4. Whoa, how do I do that? Well, I think it helps to just, again, put down these values here. If this here is 2 pi, this here is pi, this here is 2 pi, and let's go like this, we'll split it in half, so that was pi over 2, this here is another pi over 2, so that was pi over 2 here, and what's a pi over 4? Pi over 4 is half of that again, so that means it's actually this, this one right here is actually pi over 4, I want you to concentrate on this one, and that means I'm going to add an extra one here, an extra one here, an extra one here, and an extra, oh yeah, that's it. So that means one of these pi over 4s, this distance right here, is how much I have to go left by. So I'm going to take every point on this graph. So for example, the top part right here, which was here, I'm going to move it to the left by just one of these dots. So one of these over here. It's going to be here. This one, which was here, is actually going to become here. This one, which is down here, is going to go left. This one right here is also going to go left. So it's going to look something like, I mean, it's not going to be perfect. Keep in mind, my graph won't be perfect. But something like this. Now, a good question might be, what about the sign of the phase angle? What if we made it positive or negative? We can move it to the right or to the left. For our sake, we're just going to kind of ignore that. So we're going to see. Now, what about this one here? What about pi radians? What does that mean? That means we can say it's going to be left by pi. Well, what does that mean? Uh, well, let's see here. That's going to mean every point then is going to be left by pi. Well, how much is pi again? Let's remind ourselves. This right here is pi. This here is 2 pi. That means everything goes to the left. Each of these points here goes to the left by all of this. So imagine this point right over here then goes over here. And that means it's going to go, this point right here is going to move all the way over here. This point right here is going to move all the way over here. So that means it's going to be something like this. It's maybe a little bit hard to see, but the whole thing basically gets shifted. That means the whole thing is going to look like this. That means each point then has been shifted to the left you could say, or you could even say to the right, it actually won't matter. But you know, every point here has been moved to the left by pi. Now another way to consider it would be, hey, look at this, the whole cycle right here had eight points. I mean, you could also consider it like this. I just want to show you an alternate way of thinking about it. The whole thing, this whole cycle, had eight different dots, didn't it? And this whole cycle went left, let's say left by uh, one-eighth, you know, of a cycle. I'm just trying to show you how you could do it this way, right? So that because, uh, you know, it's one-eighth of these little dots, because maybe you weren't given the equation, maybe you're given the graph and you're supposed to find the amount it's gone to the left by. Then you can say, okay, well, there's eight different dots. It's been moved to the left by eight of them. So what does that really mean? Well, that means you have to scale it. So it's 2 pi times 1 over 8. So that'd be 2 pi over 8. Well, that gives you pi over 4. See how you could sort of 
get that. So from the graph, you could get to the number of pi over 4. Same thing over here. Each point has been, let's see, it's been moved to left by, in this case here, 1, 2, 3, 4 out of 8. All right, so here I could say left by 4. Whoops. 4 of these little lines out of 8. So that means it's going to be 2 pi times, well, 4 over 8, out of 8, by the way, is uh, 1 over 2. So that means it'd be just 2 pi over 2. So hey, that would give you pi. So to see how from the phase angle you could do the drawing, but also, like I'm just showing you here, from the drawing you can get the phase angle just by considering how many little dots are there compared to that. So that may seem a little bit awkward, but this is how we can deal with it. Phase angle can be a little bit weird to look at at first. So how are we actually going to solve this? Well, I can take my V, and remember that it's just the derivative with respect to time, so d by dt, of my x equation, which is x0 sine omega t plus phi. So let's do that here. So I'll say that means it's x0 sine of omega t plus phi. Now, uh, this you can use chain rule to actually do it because you want to do the, uh, the t derivative here. And remember how to use chain rule. It means you have to do the derivative of the um, outside function, which would be sines. And then it's the derivative of sine becomes a cos. And then you have to always multiply that by the uh, derivative of the inside, which in this case is just going to be omega. Now, don't worry about it because you're given this equation anyway. But just to try to show you then, you end up with, well, you'd end up with, let's see, it would be, remember I said sine, derivative of sine becomes cos. So you're going to have your x0 times cosine. And you're going to do your original inside here. It depends on your math level if, you've, uh, if you're learning about chain rule. If not, don't worry about this. But then remember, you do derivative of, a omega, of t, which is just omega. So omega would be multiplied, so I'll put an omega there. And good news, that is one of your equations of motion here. So you can do that one. Or there's another one as well. Okay, and that one actually has to do with uh, x0, and so that's your amplitude as well as your x values. So that equation goes v equals plus or minus omega times the square root of, and this time it goes x0 squared minus x squared. So this is your other equation for velocity. Basically, whichever one you have some of the data for, then you should use it. Remember, x0, let's just talk about all these. t is the time, which is in seconds. v is the velocity, which is in meters per second. X is the displacement from equilibrium at any time. X0 is the maximum displacement, or the amplitude, which is also in meters. Uh, omega is the angular frequency, which is in radians per second. And finally, we have our phase angle, which is measured in radians. OK, we can go one little step further. Uh, so this is, these are ones on your data booklet, so that's good. However, acceleration, we do not have it in the data booklet, but it's OK. We can actually figure it out in case you need it. Because we remember that acceleration is just equal to minus, remember, omega squared x. And do you remember what x was? Remember x, remember that was x0 sine of omega t plus phi. So you could just put it together. You didn't have to do another derivative. I mean, technically, by the way, you could have done the derivative of this or the derivative of this to get the acceleration. But there's an easier way. You just use your equation for simple harmonic motion and just plug in x. So that means if you needed to know the acceleration at any time, given some uh, amplitude and, let's say, the angular frequency and the phase angle, then you can do it this way. It's just minus omega squared, that's just sitting in front, times this piece right here. So x0 sine omega t plus phi. Just in case you need it, you could do that as well. Now remember, this one here is not on your formula booklet, so it's important to be able to get there.